Hey guys, this is Abba with Coffee and Code. Today I'll be looking at arrays. Let's get to it. So arrays are used to store multiple variables inside. Arrays are kind of like a group, which is a good way of thinking about it. So let's get started with an example and let's just work through it. So the syntax was creating an array is just type the variable type that you want. So in this case, I want an array of integers. And just before we press space, we want to type an open square bracket and a close square bracket. This is to indicate to the compiler that we're going to be using an array and we want it to be of type integer. And then we can do space and then we can give it a name like numbers. We can equal that to new int three. So what this means is we need to make a new instance of the array in order to be able to store all of the numbers that we need. So we make a new integer array of length three. So this means that now we can store three different numbers inside our numbers variable. So let's demonstrate that. So we can type numbers followed by a square bracket and all arrays start at index zero. So zero is our first position and we can say that equals to 10. So we can say numbers one equals to 20 and numbers two equals to 30. Perfect. So now we're, we stored all of the positions and even if we try to do numbers three, it might let us, but if we run the program, it says our index is out of bounds. So you just gotta make sure that the array positions don't exceed the length. So if we just delete that line and we run it again, we get no errors. So what we can do now is we could just have a console write line and we could put the number zero plus a space numbers numbers one plus a space and finally numbers two and if we print that out we can see it being printed to the screen perfect and just as normal variables if you know you want to change these numbers later on it doesn't matter which order you change them in you just have to reference the index position just to know that this number cannot exceed the length of the array otherwise you'll get an out of bounds error and your program will crash which is exactly what you don't need because then the program will shut down and it will be terminated. With arrays, we can use for loops to print out all the values. So we can make a basic for loop. We say var i equals zero, and we can say i is smaller than numbers dot length. And we can just do i plus plus and open the curly braces. So here we're making a new integer variable, and we're saying from from i is zero, and we're using zero because our first index in the array is in fact zero. i is smaller than the numbers array dot the length and the length will be whatever you've typed into here but it's good that we don't type in the number three because if you change that you have to change all references so hard code this value and then type in numbers dot length so it always gives you back this length just in case you want to change this in the future then you don't have to go through every for loop in your program and change the static reference so inside here we could do another console write line and we can duplicate what's happening here. So if we comment this line, we could do a console write and we can say numbers zero plus a space. But we don't wanna be using number zero. So you wanna be going around every single array position. So as we have a counting variable of i inside the for loop, we can replace the zero with i. So it will start at zero and it will go to the numbers dot length. So if we run the program again, you'll see that the example is exactly the same what was printed here. So now that we've shown you how to use arrays, let's actually use it in a real world example so we can see how it's used properly. Okay, so here's a very basic example. We're just printing enter a number, reading the number, and we're just doing this three times to sort it in three separate integer variables. So if we just run the code, 10, 10, 10, and we can see the values being printed out here. Now the problem with this is every single time I needed to create a new number, I would copy and paste these two lines, and change the integer variable name from first to second to third. But what if we had 10? There is no point in making an int fourth, int fifth, int sixth, and so on until 10, because that'll just be very tedious. So the solution to this is using arrays. As in the previous example, we can make an integer variable called numbers, and we can make that equal to an, a new int array, and we can say position 10. So instead of having three separate inputs like this, all with essentially the same code except for the assignment, we can make a for loop. We can use int i equals zero, and i is less than numbers dot length. Perfect. So now we have the basic for loop set up to go from zero, which is the right index for the start of the array, till the numbers dot length, which in this case will be 10. 
we can take one of these lines and place it in here. And now we don't need the rest of the lines, so let's just get rid of them. Now the problem with what we have right now is we're still using int first. So instead of using int first, we want to be using our numbers array. So we can change this to numbers, and we can say i. I'll be referencing the index that we're up to right now, represented by i, which is the counter in our for loop. It'll go from 0, in this case, to 9. So it'll ask us to enter a number, it'll read it into whatever index we're up to, and this will happen 10 times, and then it will close out and get to this line. First, let's just make sure this works before we get to the printing. Perfect, so now we have our 10 numbers stored, and that seemed to work okay. So now we had our 10 numbers, but we didn't do anything with them, so what we can do is we can essentially make another for loop just like this one, and we can do a console dot write, and we can just do numbers i, and insert a space right after it. Just to make this a little bit shorter, let's change the length down to 5. And we can get rid of these codes now. And hit F5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we have them all printed. Perfect. So now if we need to load in more variables, we can literally just change that number and hit run. And it will be dynamic like that. And we don't have to keep making the same copy and paste line, creating a new integer and saying int 5th, int 6th, int 7th, int 9th. So now you can just change this array length and now the length of here will update and the length of here update. And this is great because if you only had three numbers and you later decided that you needed four or maybe even five, then it doesn't matter because all you have to do is change this and the rest of your program will depend on this number changing. Whereas before we would need to, to copy and paste the console write, copy and paste the read, and also we'd have a separate integer variable that we had previously and it would just keep, keep, keep getting bigger. But with this, even if we set this to 500, then it doesn't matter because our code doesn't change. So you can read in as many numbers you want and it's all just dependent on this length. So that's it for arrays. I hope that makes sense. In the next video, we'll be covering array lists. And the difference between arrays and array lists is that arrays, they are fixed size. If you needed 501 elements, then you can't change it while the program is running. You have to change it and recompile the program, which can be problematic in certain cases, which is why array lists exist. Array lists are dynamic in size so it doesn't matter if you have zero elements or you have a thousand elements, it does not matter. Elements can scale up and down when the program is running and you don't have to recompile them. You just tell the program that you want an array list and then you can use it throughout the program. Array lists tend to be slower because of their dynamic nature, so if you always know that you're going to need a fixed amount of array length, then always use arrays. If you're not sure how many positions that your program will need, then you should always use the array list. Okay, that's it for today. See you in the next one.